Hi, welcome to Mix and Jam, a channel about game development experimentation. Today's project is inspired by Monument Valley. Monument Valley is a gorgeous puzzle game that consists of levels that use impossible geometry and optical illusions to guide the player's path. I always wondered how this effect was achieved and wanted to give it a try using Unity. So here are the steps I needed to follow for this recreation. Implement the pathfinding system to guide the player through the level. Create the perspective illusion present in the game. And add some assets, particles and effects. I started by importing the ProBuilder and ProGrids packages to my project. With ProBuilder, it's simple to build shapes like boxes and stairs and ProGrids makes it easy to move those objects around, snapping them on a grid. In order to get the isometric look, I've changed the camera's projection from perspective to orthographic, and I also changed the angle of the camera to be of this value. Then, I created another cube to represent the player. In order to start working on the pathfinding system, I created a script that would be attached to every block that the player could walk to. I created a function to determine the walk point by following some offset variables. I wanted to create a system where I could determine the possible directions the player could go from a certain object. For that, I created a class called GamePath that has a transform variable and a boolean to check if the path is activated. Then, I created a new list of the type game path called possible paths. That way, I can manually set the path possibilities for each object. I did a script for the player that would detect the current block the player was positioned by casting a raycast and calling the result current cube. I also did a camera ray cast to detect which block was clicked. Then I started working on the logic for the pathfinding system. On the find path function, I created a list of next cubes and past cubes. By looking at the possible paths of the current cube, we check the active ones and add them into the next cubes list. I also add the current cube to the past cubes list. In the explore cube function, I check on every element on the next cubes list if the walkable paths were already visited. If so, there's no need to keep building the path. But if it hasn't been visited, it adds it to the next cubes list and keep doing that until it reaches the clicked cube. With that, I was able to trace everything back and build the final path for the movement. With the final path created, I made a do twin sequence by moving the player to each block using linear easing to make the movement have a seamless transition. Now I started working on the layout of the level similar to this stage on the game. I had to create pivots for the objects that could rotate in order to enable new paths. This is when I started working on the optical illusion part. On the original level, this connection of blocks is made seamless. To replicate that, I created a new layer called Top, applied the layer to some of the blocks. Then I duplicated the camera, made the culling mask of that new camera to only check for the layer I created and changed the clear flags property from skybox to depth only. That way, the objects on the top layer render in front of everything. The problem is, is that they also render in front of this pillar object. The one way I found to solve this is to use planes that only render on one side. I added some planes on the pillar and changed their layer to top layer. And that way, it's possible to hide the connection and it is still fine to rotate the center object because the planes only render from one side. With the illusion ready, I was able to use the path system to connect the blocks. By testing it, we can see that the perspective makes it seem like there's a seamless transition between positions. 
and in order to make the level playable, I created a condition system that would activate and deactivate paths depending on the rotation of certain objects. For this project, I collaborated with Max Turnbull for some 3D art. Max is a super talented 3D artist and I personally love his art style, so I was super excited to work with him. Check out his work on his Twitter. He did an awesome character and some props for the level. I implemented the 3D art in the level with the character animation and changed things like the lightning and background. I also added a few particle effects to make the level look a little bit more organic. And after a bit of adjustments, this is how it turned out. As always, the link for the project's repository is on the description below. Mix and Jam is really only possible because of everyone helping out on Patreon, including these top tier supporters. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and share it with friends. Thank you so much for watching.